Hello and welcome to Play Game Spread Joy. I am Justin. Uh, tonight I will be showing off Titania Ascending from XYZ Game Labs. It's their new co op style flip and write game. I got a chance to get a preview copy, prototype copy, and uh, I get to show off the actual the solo slash competitive mode of it. The game itself is primarily played on a gamepad. Uh, each player gets a different sheet from this pad. They're going to be numbered one through six on here. So if you are playing the co-op uh, style of the game, which is the main part of the game, you sh should each have a different sheet. So it's for two to six players if you're playing the co-op version. Uh, on here, you're going to see uh, a full grid laid out with numbers and letters. Part of it's shaded, part of it is not. Uh, this game is actually set up in two different phases, a divination phase and an ascension phase. During the divination phase, you can only write everything in the non-shaded inside area of the, of the paper. Uh, and then during the ascension phase, uh, you'll be able to draw and write in the shaded area as well. It kind of opens up your options. Uh, and it'll make more sense as we get to that phase why that was important for this game. So right here, I'm actually showing off, uh, because I've played several times already for the solo competitive mode, um, your sheets will look different each time, of course, uh, kind of like most flip and write style games. But during this game, phase one, divination, you're going to be writing stuff in, drawing things. But then uh, phase two for the ascension, you end up crossing things out, shading them in. So it will look a bit different than standard flip and writes where you're only drawing. So in this, we actually get to cross things back out as well. Uh, but today, I'll actually be playing on the larger printed out uh, copy. But I'm using dry erase markers uh, with a laminated sheet to make it a little bit easier to show off uh, the different colors of the different face symbols in this game. And it, if I do make a mistake while streaming, I can erase it a little bit easier than if i using a pencil that would come with the game itself. As you can see, it comes with pencils. The This right here, you're going to see... The Feymite mat and the Hollywood Citadel section. This will actually should actually come on a, another uh, printed mat like this uh, sheet of uh, or sheet, sheet pad. Uh, the prototype copy I received did not have that in it, so I printed it off to be able to show it off, and I could make it a little bit bigger to show off on screen as well. So in this game, we're going to have the standard double-sided cards. One side of the card is for the divination phase of the game and the other side of the card is for the ascension phase of the game. Each of these cards is going to have uh, numbers and symbols laid out in various shapes within the grid and within a round you'll end up choosing a card that in, that you end up drawing onto your car, uh, paper. Now some of these um, will correlate to the different tiles that we draw from the bag and they have pendants that point down below them. So they'll end up creating a pair or a vision set that will tell you, okay, this vision only uses the uh, the number below it, but not the face symbol below it because it doesn't have a pendant over the fey. Now, if you're using this card over here, it does have a pendant where the fey would be above, uh, be right below it. This indicates if there's a pendant above a face symbol, anytime you see the Titania ascending logo on that grid you replace that with the face symbol from below it now if you see a dragon right here and there's a pendant it's showing saying hey whatever number is below that pendant is what that dragon is going to be now for all of these tiles you're going to end up seeing six different symbol uh, face symbols and then six numbers six numbers are one through six you're going to see each number three times in the bag and then the six symbols, you're actually going to see the uh, the whirlpool one that represents wisps. The feather-like symbol is for sirens. The butterfly-like symbol is for pixies. The face uh, or mouthless face is for uh, golems. The axe-looking symbol is for the varthkin. And then the slash is for the Rashasha. Just like the numbers, you're going to see each of those symbols three times in the bag as well. So there's a total of 18 tiles in the bag for standard play. But the numbers and the symbols are mixed in how they match. So you're not going to find all sixes with the pixie symbols 
and so on. So for the solo slash competitive play, we've taken uh, one of each symbol out of the bag and we're going to randomly, uh, uh, basically randomly draw them to determine their might, fey might power for the game. Basically it tells you what they're worth at the end of the game if they're on your board and not crossed out. Phase one divination, we're trying to divine all six of the hollowed units and those are based on these crowns that we see. So in a solo slash competitive mode, we actually have eight rounds to do this. First thing we're gonna do in a solo slash competitive uh, mode, we actually get to fill in or prepare one of these boons that we've already earned. So typically if you fill a full row, uh, row or column of the non-shaded area, you can earn a boon by uh, marking an X in one of the bubbles. Now solo competitive, we get to pre-mark one of those X's uh, to pre to preemptively have a boon to spend. Now boons are spent uh, once we earn the uh, aid abilities and aid skills of the different fa of certain phase. If we uh, set them onto hammer spaces, then we can use their abilities in the future. But for now, everyone should select one of these rows or columns, A through F or one through six, and just mark an X next to it. So you have that boon prepared to spend. To set up the round, we're going to take the cards, shuffle them, and we're going to start with three cards out. And then we're also going to draw three tiles. Now also what we're going to do is add one more card and one more tile. So these three are the preset visions for the for the first round. These right here, this card, and this tile are actually reserve. So when you're playing solo competitive, there's a reserve set off to the side where you can spend one of your earned boons to replace essentially a card or the tile with any of these that are already out. So for example, say I didn't like this one golem right here. I'd prefer maybe the, the four uh, Verthkin. I could spend this boon right here by filling in the bubble and use that with this card set. Now that would not replace it for everyone else. That would only replace it for me. Now part of this goal, because we have eight rounds to divine the six citadels, we have six crowns and you can only divine one per round. So that means you can pass in a round if you choose to, but that makes it harder and harder each uh, round after that because you're forcing yourself to do something. So the earlier you can divine something, the better off you are. So what you want to consider when placing these onto your player uh, player sheet is that whatever you fill in and divine now, you'll need that symbol on your sheet again for the uh, ascension phase to be able to mark it off. If you do not divine six during the divination phase, and then you do not ascend all six during the ascension phase, you'll lose. So I'm going to... Uh, pick one of these, I'll draw it into my board and show you how that works. I, I'll probably go for the crown right here, this crown vision. Now whatever you see on this grid can be flipped, can be rotated in any way you choose. If you look closely at the bottom of it right here, it'll actually show you a little bit closer how it can be rotated and flipped around. So I'm going to mark out the overall shape, which is this L shape. I'm actually going to mirror it on my board. And I'm going to put it into this top corner right here. Now, these two Titania Ascending symbols right here, because it has this pendant right here that points down at the wisp, both of those become wisps. So I'm going to draw a wisp and both of these right here. And then this one that's on the hammer, because it's on a hammer, I divine it and get their aid right down here on this banner. So I'm going to mark it over here as well. Kind of a little check mark. If you're playing a co-op, you can use this paper to show the whole group what you have uh, gained aids from, what you have divined, and what you have ascended. And then the aids that everyone has used, used overall as well. Now, because I've uh, gained this aid spot, I also have to then mark, fill this block in completely. 
because I've used it as an ability, so I can't earn points for it at the end of the game now. And then also I have some numbers. I'm going to do these numbers in a different color, just so they stand out for the fun of it. Both of these dragon symbols with the pendant point down to this one, so they are both ones. Now because that one is on a crown, I drop right down that uh, column, that pendant right below it, draw a one in it. So that means column F is a one. But in the same way, because we uh, divined it and did something with it in that space, we do have to fill in that space. And so that would be one round. Now, if you were playing the co-op mode, you would typically just take that one vision, set it off to the side, and then replace it. Uh, I believe you have the choice to replace some of the other ones. I'd have to verify in the rules. But in the solo slash competitive mode, you actually take all of these and discard them. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to take all four of those, uh, the three visions, plus the alternates, set them to the side, and draw new ones. So we got three more vision sets out. We got another an alternate card, alternate tile right here as well. Now to keep track, I'm also going to uh, mark over here the divination phase and ascension. We're going to try to keep track of how many rounds it's been. And so I'm going to mark the one. We've already had one round so far. Move on to our next round. And we pick another vision set to draw and move on in that same way. Uh, trying to divine all six crowns, uh, potentially earn the aids uh, by placing phase on the different hammers. Now, if you pl place the same aid that you already have again on another hammer, you don't earn the bonus again, so it doesn't actually cross itself out. And you can also only divine one crown per round, and you can only you can't divine the same uh, number or symbol again. So I cannot put a one on a crown now because I've already divined the one so I'm more most likely going to try to use this one if possible you know what let's just go for it I'm going to do the t-shape vision I'm going to play it a little bit safe I'm going to be okay and I'm going to attempt to start filling in or maximize my space with rows and columns here but it will mean that I'm going to divine the pixie as well as put it on the hammer. So because it's on the crown, that divines it here. And then that'll also go into this up here. And then the numbers are going to be four, five, six. But I do have to fill in both this crown space, because I divined it, and then this tool space, because I gained the aid, which I will mark down here and on this sheet. So now if I decide to start spending boons, um, the first first aid I use is cost zero, as you can see right here. It costs zero to use it, but then you mark it, and then the next one costs one. So each one you use after that will cost an additional boon. Uh, if you're playing the co-op version, you actually collectively share all your boons, but you also share this track as well. So that was uh, round two. Remember this fourth one is the alternate and you can spend a boon to uh, use the alternate card or the alternate tile in place of one of the vision ones. I'm going to use this vision right here. Um, and remember you can rotate it mirror as you choose. Um, but I'm going to put the six on the crown so I'm just going to keep it in the rotation it is I'm going to draw the outline of the shape where I'm adding it first no guarantee that this is going to be a good move for me by the end of the game but 
sometimes you gotta make a choice and just live with the consequences and so i'm going with this choice like i said six on the crown six in the corner let's change up that color and get our uh, verthkin axes out now the six i placed on the crown is going to fill in shade in that square right there i'm going to drop down dividing that six in this row so e is six now so that is our round three now bear in mind some of the aids um, if you've gained their skill and decide to use them might add a new vision uh, to this pool for yourself it may allow you to replace a vision card with one from the the discard or replace a room with one from the bag if you're playing along with me and that is something you want to do tell me tell me in chat i'll draw it for you i'll pull it for you i'll show you what's in the discard but um if you're playing along later at home um don't know what to tell you <laughs> it, it, it's kind of hard uh, if you use those abilities later with this play along of course if you're playing with your own version uh, it does of course make this a lot easier and that ability it's one of the tricks of playing live on stream there's only so much we can do uh, with some of those special abilities i might just say okay if you want to replace something uh pause the video go back go look at it something like that you, you know how to figure it out and still have fun with it you can still figure out the game so we got three new visions we got uh and new uh, alternate card alternate tile yeah that's the least risky shape unfortunately so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna draw it as shown right here so that means First off, I got two more pixies on the board. And I also have added the uh, number four dragon in that corner. And because I have completed this column, I can mark an X on the F. Uh, so now I have two boons I can spend total. And that is going to be the round. With the new alternate. Draw some new tiles from the bag. I only have two tiles in the bag. I'm going to draw the two. I'm going to throw the rest back in the bag. Mix them up and then draw again. And remember you can spend one boon to replace a card or tile uh, with one, any one of the vision sets. I'm going to spend a boon. So what I'm going to do to spend a boon, I'm going to fill in that circle so it goes from X to filled in. So it costs you one boon and I'm going to use this uh, this card in place of this card up here allowing me to draw the square in uh, two dragons two titania some uh, face symbols so I can go I think I want to divine the two and not the golem so I'm gonna do it right down here Going in that square, I'm going to leave it, not rotate it. So I'm going to put the two on the crown, the two in this corner because it's on the crown. It fills that 
up in divines it dropping a two to a pin it and then I need to draw in my golems which for the fun I'm using grain Now that was the alternate card, so me spinning that boon to do that does not replace it for everyone else if uh, other people were playing in this competitive mode. That did allow me to divine something that round, and that also filled in another uh, row, gaining me another boon. Now, when you spin a boon to uh, replace a card or a tile from the replacement set, that it does not count as a spinning an aid ability. Let me mark the round before I forget. So we've played five rounds. Get three more cards. Get some more tiles. Oh, and I need to put one more out for the alternate. I'm going to draw in the T shape from this vision right here. Up and down. It will end up divining, so it's basically rotated. Both of these Titania symbol, uh, ascending symbols turn into wisps so that will divine a wisp on my board. Putting the wisp in this banner below it uh, there's a, another wisp in the middle here and then I need to draw a golem and some twos golem at the bottom and then twos both here and here Now that uh, completes another row, uh, column for myself for another boon I've earned. Okay, so I filled that in. Now, I think what I want to do, since I already have the ability of filling uh, the pixie, of filling an empty square with the result of my choice. I think what I want to do in this scenario is... Because if I fill something in right here, no, I'm not going to do it yet. I can wait to do that because you can only, only earn boons during the divination phase. So we still have two rounds to do it, so I'm not going to fill it in yet. And see what kind of cards come out for me and see what's worth what. We got oh we got the the siren symbol coming out again. That's what we've been waiting for and hoping for at least if we can make it work. So I'm going to use this vision because it gets me more um, pixies on the board too, which I've already defined. Draw the square in here, and then I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees. Putting the four in this corner and this one that divides the four to this. I'll have to fill in that crown space. So we've now divided all six, fortunately. And then these other two spaces are going to be our pixies. Uh, but we do have one more round, so we still have a chance to potentially uh, get the aid ab ability on this hammer space. I believe there's one card that can do it, but we have to hope for the perfect card and tile setup. There's no guarantee it's going to pop up, but I can hope for it. Now, again, this did earn us another uh, column 
uh, Boone. And because I'm, in general, knowing the types of cards there are, I'm going to use my free, wait, I have one, two, three, four Boons. If I own two more, puts me at six, yep. So I'm going to, so I don't forget to do it. Make sure I still have the ability to do it. The space right here in the middle, I'm going to use one eight ability, which I've earned from the pixie down here. Show sure we have the pixie ability. Let's fill an empty square with the uh, result of our choice. So this blank one right here in the middle, I can put anything I want there. Now I'm thinking, let's see, we've divined one, there's only one of those, six, we have six here and there, there's two of those, pixies, one, two, three, four, there's quite a few of those, two is here and here and here, not bad, four, several of, multiple of those actually, so I'm going to play it a little bit safe, um, no guarantee this will even be used, but just in case we need it. I'm going to put a 1 there. So then, by putting the 1 there, I've used that 8 ability uh, to fill an empty square, but that's also given me two more, one, one row, one column, two more boons to be able to spin. So now I have a total of 6. And because aids become more expensive to use, it's going to be 1, then 2, then 3. That allows me to afford the one, two, and three uh, combined total of six. Um, only if I was to somehow fill all of these spaces would I get four more boons and enough to get the last aid. Typically in a solo uh, play, you don't get that fourth one, so having extra boons is more beneficial for these reserve cards. And we got one more round. Uh, maybe I can I uh, gain the aid ability of this last thing I've been looking for. Likelihood is looking slimmer and slimmer. It's okay, because you're also allowed to pass on the round. You don't actually have to draw something every round when playing this mode. But I like to hope for the best, uh, find as much as I can, because the now, something I would have to verify uh, with XYZ and designers of the game is for the uh, pixie ability of filling an empty square with the result of your choice. When I read that rule, I see the hammer and crown spaces is not being empty. Because otherwise, I would just draw in a siren uh, feather shape on top of that hammer. Uh, technically, we have not drawn on that square, but I do not consider it empty because it does have a symbol there of some sort already. Otherwise, I would draw in exactly what I want and give myself an extra ability. Have fun from there. You can tell me if I'm playing that wrong, um, if you know the correct uh, ruling on that, but personally, I play where you cannot draw or use the ability uh, when it says an empty square on a uh, a hammer tool or crown square but not a huge deal let's see our with the last cards uh visions that came out for round eight uh not the shapes i was looking for so the shape i was looking for is uh, we drew it near the beginning is that kind of simple l shape now i knew an l shape might fit right here if it happened to come out right with the right combination i could have drawn it in Overall, not a huge deal. It doesn't always hurt to not have something drawn there, and I still have the uh, ability of the pixie to draw something in, or to later erase a recorded square if something's kind of in my way. So that's going to be round eight of the divination phase. We're gonna move on to phase two, which is the ascension phase. For this phase, all we do is flip the cards over. So now we're looking at the back side of all the cards, but we still draw three visions and an alternate each round when playing solo slash competitive. 
bear in mind if you're playing the co-op version, you do not have uh, the alternates out like this. So we're going to have eight rounds now um, during phase two. What we're trying to do is when we pick a vision card um, and vision set, the uh, card tells you the shape you have to shade in on your board. Uh, the rule for it, uh, in this case, there's like the, the fearsome beauties. First one is 12 or more total dragons, which are all your numbers. Any number is a dragon. Uh, the second one is uh, be nimble. Uh, you can't cover a golem or yorthkin. Fey. Go now, be precise. One to four total dragons. So that's uh, very few dragons. Uh this extra uh, reserve card is to the Citadel, three different Fae symbols, which uh, the Titania symbol, uh, ascending symbol, represents a, basically any Fae. It wants you to have three different ones total. So we're going to end up uh, picking one of these, uh, shading in that area on our, our player uh, sheet. Now, in this phase, you are allowed to go to the shaded region as well as, as well as the non-shaded region. It gives you a little bit more space. Uh, but what we're also trying to do is when we're shading in, say I chose this vision. Um, because we have divined a four, we're looking for all the different things we've divined because we want to have them ascend. If I chose this one, it has the four on it. If during this, the 12 or more dragons, if I covered at least one four, that would help that four ascend because I've covered it and marked it out. Uh, for this example, um, if I chose that, it's kind of a bad combination because it shows a golem. So say you're trying to ascend a golem, you can actually do it that you'd only be allowed to ascend the dragon if you chose that one. And then over here, you're allowed to ascend a two or the Russia symbol. So I'm going to take a risk. Shade, shade, shade. And because remember, you can rotate and mirror these shapes from the vision cards. And then I'm going to shade in that too. Now, when you shade in a divined citadel to help it ascend, You actually find it down here. It does not have to be from the same uh, same row as what you just covered. So like in this example, I divide it in two and column uh, A, but I covered it in column B, and that's fine. But I've covered it using a vision that matched the, the number or the face symbol. I'm gonna mark it in down here, uh, fill in the pendant, which I'll also do on the larger sheet, to show I've completed one of six ascensions. So the goal of this phase is to ascend all six of those, and then you can score points. If you cannot ascend all six, you lose. So that's going to be round one. So these options are, the first one says flame apocalypse, no fade. So only dragons, numbers, or blank spaces are allowed to be filled. The next one is thread the needle which is each dragon unit is odd, so only odd uh, numbers allowed. And then the next one is draw a wording rune, uh, erase and replace one divine citadel. So this one's a little bit trickier in that if you uh, draw it down, you actually then end up having to replace one of your uh, divine citadels, which uh, in some scenarios can be a little bit helpful. Say you're having trouble getting to one and you know you have a lot of other options. But it can also be detrimental as well. So be mindful of when you choose to play one of those cards. But what I'm thinking is... I kind of set myself up with this with the, the two-player wall ago. Is being able to get into this 4-2 to leave these pixies open. And I can do exactly that with this 4. So this box and that... I won't touch any Fey because I can draw that big box here and then jump into that four right there. So I'm going to shade in that four and then that bigger box of four pieces. 
covers and doesn't actually take out anything because I had no dragons there. There's no fey there. So it meets the requirement of having no of not covering any fey. It actually uh, helps me ascend the four. I'm going to mark that uh, pendant as completed. And we've completed two of our six ascensions so far. And we still have uh, six more rounds we can uh, attempt to get the last four ascended. And we still have uh, use of aids as well because we have not spent any of the any more boons. We still have six boons. Now boons we do not spend. Actually gains points at the end. The alternate. Some new tiles. Whisper one. Okay. That's, I like seeing that. There's a pixie. Okay, so let's see what we can do with these options. This is the risky, or a better one for me. The Z shape. Dragon units. Odd only. I'm not going to cover dragons because I'm going to mirror this shape as allowed. Going here. Z shape down to here. And then that covers our pixie. Let's it ascend to here. And then we go for the discard wipe. I'll mark the round. That was round three. We have five more rounds. And we still have three to ascend. You got a wisp three, pixie one, the siren two, alternate is a golem one. Okay. I'm just going to do this and save my boon. So, what I can do here, no golems or yorthkins, I can fill in here, go up, down. So I've rotated the whole thing 90 degrees. Covers a pixie, covers a six, two blanks, and a one. Divines uh, sends my one. I'll mark off the round, so don't forget to do that. Clear for the round. And I still have four rounds to ascend two more. I need a six and the wisp to ascend. Here's hoping the cards and the tiles align in my favor. So I got two tiles in the bag. I'll draw those out. Golem two. Oxfashion three. Tiles go back in the bag. Uh, so two, three, golem, no, so I don't like either of those. So looking for a six or a wisp. Six or a wisp. Otherwise, we're going to have a round that we just end up passing. Don't look forward to doing that. Six or a wisp. Nope, that's a two drop six. Six or a wisp. Six or a wisp. Let's make it work. Nope, that's a Pixie four, Pixie four. So this is going to end up being a round that I end up just passing because none of the tiles end up matching uh, what I'm trying to ascend. So you can pass for a round and not draw in anything if you choose to. Just it's also a round that you accomplish nothing. So it's something you have to keep that in mind as well. Mark that as a round. So I did nothing that round. So now I have three rounds to ascend two more. And remember, I can only do one per round. So I need to get these well matched and hope for the best here. Now again, we're looking for a six or a wisp. Six or a wisp. Okay, we found a wisp three uh, paired with the fearsome beauties of 12 or more total dragons. Not the easiest thing to do. And then the my odd beast, uh, where each dragon is odd, is paired with a 
first can six. The latest Intel where you'd have to draw a word and ruin and erase and replace. The divide is with a golem three. And then our uh, alternates, we have a field report, which is also a draw, a warding rune, erase and replace, paired with a pixie one. So we have two potential options here. We have a wisp and we found a six. I'm going to spend a boon. Take this card. And replace it with the wisp now. So I go here, hit the six by itself. Yep. Go risky. You do this. Go with that shape. Go here, three down, two up. Fills it in, fills in, ascends the six, ascends the six, but then I have to draw a rune, erase and replace one divine citadel. Okay, well, this, I don't know if this worked out in our favor or not, because I drew a one wisp. Um, it can't be one because we've already done the one. So does this make it a wisp again? Or we play until it's something completely different. Not sure what the ruling on this is um, because it actually says uh, replace it. Um, to me, that means it should be a different symbol. Um, we can't have the one. We already have the wisp. I'm going to draw a different rune and go until we technically do replace the wisp. Um, to five wisp. So it's the wisp again, but now it's going to be the five uh, because we don't have a five yet. So I'm going to take that wisp out of the D column, turn it into a five. All of these get discarded. That's going to be a round. I have two rounds to make the five ascend now. Which I have one five on the board, so this is not going to be easy to do at all. Looking for five. Looking for five. Come on, give me a five. There's a five as an alternate at least. I may end up having to use eight abilities to cross something out. Erase a recorded square, fill an empty square, and then I can use the alternate five potentially. Maybe what I'd go for here. So let's look at our cards first. Three different fey. Can make that one, two, three, four fey. I can make that work with the five and guarantee a win. No fey, so numbers only. Not a great choice. Three different fey, but a different shape. Which is not a good shape. You know what, I'm going to play this and guarantee myself a win. Because uh, it's been several games that I've lost in a row. I feel like guaranteeing a win is better than nothing. So what I'm going to do is first I'm going to verify that fits. One, two, three, yep, yep, yep. I'm going to use the spend a boon 
to use eight ability. So I've already done the free one, so this one costs one. And then use my ability of the va uh, the wisp to vanish and erase one recorded square. And from that, I'm going to take. Honestly, it doesn't matter which one of these I do. I just because I can. I'm going to take this uh, Varthkin axe symbol out from this bottom corner. And then I'm going to spend two boons, one, two boons, to use an aid and use my plot ability from the pixies to fill an empty square with the result of my choice. So I'm now going to fill in this empty space that I just created with a five. And then I'm going to spend a boon to use this alternate tile in this vision right here, replacing that tile for myself. Clear path, three different fey. Uh, so this actually lines up right there, vertical, horizontal, and that five that I just created, the vertical, the horizontal, and the five. Ascends the five. That was three different face, so it was allowed. And that was a round seven uh, game completion for myself. And what I will do is um, reveal one more set of the tiles and cards for anyone who has decided to play along. And then I will then go into the scoring phase if you have completed and ascended all six. I was fortunate enough to find a way to make that work. It was very tricky. Not something I anticipated being able to do after um, that round of having to draw a room to replace something I had, but I made it work somehow. Uh, this is a game that the solo mode can play in about 30 minutes uh, once you know all the rules. The game says it is approximately 45 minutes long when playing co-op. Uh, it can range from about 45 minutes to an hour. So for the last uh, set of visions and alternates, we have uh, the first vision is for the brood, where each dragon unit would have to be even, uh, paired with the siren six and then there would be the stand together with three of the same fey with again the siren but a two instead of a six third vision option is watch them burn with an odd total of dragons uh, paired with the rashasha five and your alternates for this round would be the fearsome beauties of 12 or more total dragons or another siren symbol or uh, siren four remember you only uh win slash uh complete the game if you do during phase one uh divine six citadels and then in phase two if you're able to ascend all six of those so let's move on to the scoring phase so we're going to gain points equal to the value of their unused fey as indicated by the fey might board so we're going to add up, so any uh, shushes we had would have been one point. Any uh, remaining pixies are worth two points, which I had. Uh, let's see, I have one remaining. So that's two points. I'm just going to start totaling it up right here. Then if I had any wisp left, which I do have, there are three points each. Any remaining... Varthkin symbols are worth four points at this point. I have one of those. Any remaining uh, golem symbols are worth five points for this game, which I have two of, so that's going to be ten points. And then if I had any remaining siren symbols, they would be worth six points for this game, which I do not have any. Next up, we'll gain points equal to the n total number of unused dragons. We'll add up all the dragon spaces remaining on the board. So I have a 5 plus 1 is 6, plus 4 is 10, plus 2 is 12, plus 4 is 16. 
Next up, we're going to gain three points for each boon uh, we have earned but did not spend. So we had one of those. So that's going to earn us three points. And then we'll count the number of unshaded squares in our largest continuous unused area. So as long as squares share a side, let's find our largest continuous area of squares that are, have been unshaded. I have one, two, three, or one, two, three. So I have three is my largest. I gain one point per space in that area. So that's three points for that. And then the player who scored the most points would win, ultimately win the game if you're uh, playing with more than just yourself in this game. So I'm going to set these aside. We'll add up that total score. Now, if you're playing along, let me know how well you scored, how well you did. And then we'll go over the titles earned based on your in-game score. So my total is uh, 2 plus 3 is 5 plus 4 is 9 plus 10 is 19 plus 16 is 35 plus 3 is 38 plus 3 is a 41 point game so let's see just how well we did with that score not the worst not the best so let's read off the different titles earned uh, so there's a point scale uh, and titania awards you for your service the following titles if you had less than 30 points, you're, or 30 or less points, you're a puck. 31 to 40 points, you're a baron. 41 to 50 points, you're a viscount. So, I've earned the title of a viscount for this game. Now, if I uh, gained 51 to 60 points, I'd be a count. 61 to 70 points is an earl. 71 to 80 points is a marquee or a marquess. I may mispronounce that. You can correct me if you want. I don't care. M-A-R-Q-U-E-S-S. -S. 81 to 90 points would be a duke. And then 91 or more points, you are a prince. So this is how the solo mode of Titania Ascending works. Um, if you're playing competitive, it would also work the same way. Bear in mind, we played uh, with a basically a laminated sheet version uh, that I printed off online. But I was using the prototype cards and tiles, the game prototype, which I believe the main game will also have. Uh, this game pad where sheets will be labeled one through six. Um, so as you flip these, they just go to the next number. They are double-sided with the same number on the back as the front. So you can play multiple times with the same number. Uh, and then it's however many pages so you can even if you're playing solo each next game can feel different because the layout of the crowns and the hammers are different on each page uh, to create a different uh, game layout for each person playing when playing co-op and or competitive uh, so when you're playing competitive you can either everyone have a different sheet or potentially everyone have the same sheet if you want it to make it even that more combative be like hey we played the exact same game exact same layout I still beat you type game. That is up to you how you want to play. But to me, this is a slightly more challenging style of flip and write. Uh, has a bit more meat to the bones. Um, if you if you end up playing the co-op version, I find that the way it encourages communication between between everyone is uh, both refreshing and a very well thought out process, and that. The better you communicate, the better you will play. Um, because the person whose turn it is actually gets to pick the vision and then you, you write down in order. So if someone divines a citadel before you, the crown on your space in that same column becomes like a blank space. So there's a lot of ways you can work together on that. Uh, you can only divine one per round um, as a group and you can only earn one aid per round as a group. So you want to talk together about, hey, I can place this on this look on the hammer or whatever to get this ability or I can divine something is that something as a group we want to do or not but then also in the second phase for ascending you're crossing things out on your board in different orientations and in different ways and so each board will end up looking completely different by the end of the game which is a very unique way to go about a flip and right style game and of course, the theme, the artwork of this has been uh, so great. Uh, XYZ Games has 
of course known for having very vibrant very um, noticeable artwork in their games that I've really enjoyed that kind of pop off the table have great table presence and just my experience playing this game I've enjoyed it completely um, a the two-face system the co-op ability of it uh, you can add in difficulty for the co-op I uh, talked about these uh, wording cards and runes you can add these to the bag with all the tiles and when they're drawn out it activates a uh, difficulty card and there's uh, different levels of difficulty from green to yellow to red that uh, affect how you can play uh, for example one I have sh uh, that green one laid out over there is a draw rune and this uh, that aid can no longer be used so it kind of takes away certain abilities it can change what abilities you can use uh, when you can use certain things so the it creates a, a lot of additional tension uh, as soon as you get great uh, really good at playing the game so ultimately I hope everyone enjoyed their time tonight learning about the game I hope you have a chance to check out the Kickstarter uh, and go support XYZ Game Labs uh, they've done a lot to help support me and my endeavors to stream and review games and being able to uh, kind of work mutually with them in a way that benefits everyone of course um, to show off great games to spread some joy about gaming to support a wonderful company and overall it's just about the games and their games are wonderful the people are wonderful of course and then getting to share my love of gaming with you with the company and just this is what gaming is about with the, pe the people coming to the table together sharing a love for something that can bring us together and what they've done with this co-op game is something I have not seen uh, before and that's always something we're looking for more of is a unique theme unique play styles mechanics a combination of things we haven't seen before and so being the first flip and right co-op game on the market, uh, it's something I highly recommend you checking out. So for sure, go check out the Kickstarter. Um, if you're seeing this while it's still on Kickstarter, for sure, go check it out. And if you're able, if you're willing to support and you enjoy the game, try to support them, back them if you can. Or if you can't right now, uh, wait for it to come to stores and buy it then, buy it from them at a convention. Because I'm sure this is going to be a big hit uh, within the, the flip and right, roll and right style gaming sphere. Just because of how well it works and all the options there are for playing it. So with that, I'm going to call it a night because I talked about when to stream a couple games. Streaming one took a little bit longer than anticipated. It's late. I got video editing to do. And I'm sure everyone needs to get some rest. Uh... Because the more rest we get, the brighter we can smile and share our joy of gaming. So with that, I would wish you a wonderful week. And as always, play games and spread joy.